In biogerontology, there is a controversy over the existence of genes of aging. A large part of this controversy comes from the various ways in which biogerontologists understand the phrase genes of aging. During the 1990s, Cynthia Kenyon discovered DAF2, a gene that modulates the rate of aging through the regulation of the IGF pathway. The existence of genes of the sort has led to the idea that aging was genetically programmed. Yet, this hypothesis seems to conflict with the traditional evolutionary theory of aging, according to which there is no natural selection of any gene for shortening life. This hypothesis is often called programmed aging. Let's first look into the, the argument of those who defend the existence of genes of aging. In a 1999 paper, Richard Miller, a professor of pathology at the University of Michigan, published a very conceptual lecture on the genes of aging. Aging, he says, is a process. It should not be defined as the results of this process, namely diseases of old age, of a sum of lesions in the organism. Genes of aging are controlling this process collectively. They constitute a single aging clock that times the aging process, at least in mammals. Miller lists four arguments in favor of the existence of such a unitary genetic clock. One, caloric restriction leads to an increase of lifespan in many mammals suggesting that one single cause, the modulation of the caloric input, has effects on all results of aging. It is difficult to argue that aging is actually several different processes that have nothing to do with one another, except for their results. Two, single genetic mutations significantly increase lifespan in many animals, from worms to mice. 3. Short-lived species can evolve into long-lived species when confronted with ecological niches that pose low intrinsic risks. Miller's argument here is that this process is quick and does not depend on complex but on simple adaptations. 4. If aging resulted from multiple independent pathways, each with its own clock, it would take a long time to obtain an increase in lifespan, as it would require all of them to change. If this hypothesis is right, says Miller, then a synthetic estimation of the rate of aging and of the biological age of individuals should be possible. If such a single marker of aging reflected the, the aging of bones, cataract, muscles, reflexes, it would be hard to dismiss the idea that there is one single pathway of aging. The same goes for the existence of single interventions leading to the same effects in all tissues and dimensions of aging. According to Miller, there are actually three kinds of so-called genes for aging. In the first category, there are genes that produce effects late in life and could not for that reason be eliminated by natural selection. On those genes, see the video on Metawar. In a second category, there are genes with antagonistic pleiotropic effects, that is, an early favorable effect and a late deleterious effect. On these genes, see the video on Williams. A third category contains genes that can accelerate or decelerate aging depending on the, on the hazard of the niche the animal lives in. If it is high, it is urgent to reproduce earlier, even at the cost of a shorter life, given that life is much more likely to be short anyway. If it is low, on the contrary, it is beneficial to live longer to reproduce more. In the same line of argument, it is useful to slow down the metabolic rate, the level of activity and the rate of aging when food is scarce and is useful to speed them up when it is available. With luck, 
says Miller, these genes may be few in number and powerful in their effect. A second line of argument has been proposed by Goldsmith, an electronic engineer who has extensively written on the topic of the evolution of aging. In a nutshell, his hypothesis is that organisms have evolved mechanisms that can shorten lifespan to hasten the ability of the species to evolve. Evolution of new traits can take more or less time, depending on different factors like genetic stability or the number of generations within the same span of time. When life is shorter, generations are more numerous and, and the chance of emerging new traits in the same interval of time is greater. Aging is, according to Goldsmith, a selected trait that increases evolvability. This trait could even be a function for the species and be triggered when a colony is in a hostile environment. Stephen Orstad, a renowned biologist and specialist of aging, has refuted the views of programmed aging rather eloquently. The basic idea is that aging is no more designed or programmed than the decay of a car is. In some exceptional cases of semel parity, for instance, that is, in a species where individuals reproduce only once, they die suddenly of an episode of accelerated senescence, like the Pacific salmon. In these cases, one can certainly talk of programmed aging, but in most other species, the lifespan and certainly the rate of aging differs from individual to individual. Contrary to the appearance, Alexis Stephen Orstad says, is not programmed to last longer than a Kia, but only designed in a more robust way that is likely to increase its, its lifespan. Indeed, there is a possibility that the Kia actually lasts longer. Nothing in the design of the Lexus can guarantee that this will not happen. What is programmed is only the robustness of the Lexus, but neither the Lexus nor the Kia is programmed to fall at a given time. Of course, the point has nothing to do with what is sometimes called programmed obsolescence in the industry, that is, an intention not to build devices that could last longer for, for commercial reasons. But this example casts light on the absence of programmed aging. Devices are actually not programmed to fail at a certain point in time. They are designed in such a way that they can work properly for a certain amount of time, beyond which there is no guarantee that they will go on working. For the builder, it would certainly lead to unnecessary costs because consumers would change their devices anyway due to other reasons. A cheaper car is built of cheaper, less reliable materials and is very likely to last less long than a more expensive one built on more reliable materials. This is exactly what happens for organisms as well. Aging is not programmed. It just results from the absence of programs that would make the organism last longer. Aging is not design, it is decay, summarizes Allstadt. Fruit ripen by a genetic program, they rot. Fruits ripen by a genetic program, they rot for other reasons. This absence of program also explains the diversity of the phenotypes of aging. Not all animals of the same species develop the same forms of structural decay or functional decline and eventually die of the same intrinsic causes. This, in turn, explains why it is so difficult to find one biomarker of aging. In the end, the picture is that of a half-baked theory. It is not convincing, but it has not been satisfactorily refuted either. Indeed, Ostad does not answer the evolvability argument, which remains very theoretical and can hardly be proven. The homogeneity of the process causing changes in the organism is supposed by Miller, and the heterogeneity of processes is supposed by Ostad. It seems to be a matter of point of view, depending on whether one emphasizes the stereotypy of aging or its variability. All of this is strongly associated with debates about the possibility of biomarkers of aging.